blood cells and cause destruction. So again, we know that um, certain blood group is prone to have recurrent malaria. And we've, it's been said that sickle cell mutation is a kind of response, you know, to, to prevent the frequent malaria attack in the tropics. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that if someone has a single single cell gene, like if you are AS, you're, you're, you're not likely to have recurrent malaria, mm -hmm. but if you are SS, then it comes back full mm -hmm. blown. Wow. So Does SS, SS okay. uh, and uh, AA mm -hmm. are prone to having malaria. So for those of us who are But again, let's, let's also remember, that, that, no, let's also remember pregnant women, Okay. Under five, children okay. under five, okay, they are also prone to, to yeah. malaria. So are you saying that malaria is only caused by mosquito bites? Uh, wait, other... let's, let's get it straight. Uh, the vector is mosquito. Okay. Uh, the, the germ is plasmodium. plasmodium. Plasmodium, yeah. The germ is plasmodium, the vector is mosquito. So what happens that mosquito in the bees to feed, to pick blood from somebody, um, Inadvertently, they transmit the parasite into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm sure most people are not aware that it's doing such damage, mm -hmm. but it's a vector. So, so it takes the, it, tra it transmits the parasite from one person to another. Okay, but I've heard people, people say you female, female anopheles mosquito. Okay, but I hear people part. say that once they are so stressed, the next thing is they break down with malaria. It, it's, it's not impossible. This is this is why. Um, you know that the whole immune system, because your body is constantly trying to update your immune system mm -hmm. and to fight uh, any germs that enter your body. If you are stressed, you, your immune system becomes low and then you are now prone to malaria. And that is why, one of the reasons why children are prone to malaria because their immune system is still maturing. Pregnant women are prone to malaria because mm -hmm. the additional life creates a, an a immune body mm -hmm. on the pregnant woman. And then people that are actually have some other diseases like uh, immunocompromised HIV people, they are also prone to mm -hmm. malaria. Or people that are malnourished, they are prone to malaria. So the immune, that's the function of the immune system mm -hmm. in relation to malaria, the function of stress in relation to malaria. Okay. All right, Doctor, this uh, year's theme uh, for 2018 was ready to fight malaria. Let us um, bring it down home. Let us localize it now in Nigeria. With all that we've been doing so far, does it really look like uh, we are ready to fight malaria? Well, again, um, we're, we're, we're trying to be ready. Let me use that word. We're, we're <laughs> preparing to be ready to, be ready <laughs> to <laughs> fight malaria. Yeah. Um, malaria is such a, a burden, serious burden, yeah. not just uh, on us, you know, especially Africans, but also globally. It's mm -hmm. a big concern because um, if you look at it, uh, most malaria zone, the, the, the countries, the region with malaria are actually associated with poverty. There's a close link between malaria and poverty. How so? Why okay. is that the case? Now, first and foremost, there's a burden on the household in terms of expedition. There's a burden on your health system in terms of ability to do work, to then go out and do, do more things. Let's situate it properly. Now, poverty, in essence, is not to say because we, we keep to we kept looking at poverty from the percept, perception of low money in your pockets i mean income and all those things nice good but really if you want to define poverty poverty is you know um inability you know lack of access to capability you understand mm. you know because now you're supposed to be capable to do something if you are constrained health-wise mm. you know if you are constrained by malaria your ability or capability to do some things to escape poverty or to do work that will make you escape poverty becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. That is why when you are making social investments in terms of health and education, education and health helps you to achieve such capability mm -hmm. to be able to confront poverty and put money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So now, if, if you really want to solve poverty, it's not by saying that, wait a minute, I'm going to run to Washington I'm going to run to Paris to go and look for foreign direct investments. The starting point of solving poverty to remove that, you know, uh, um, incapability, so yeah. to say, is to invest heavily on your health and okay. education. Mm -hmm. Because right away, you cannot take this television station and go and put it in, in one corner in Nigeria Delta where people are illiterate, where they are constrained health-wise. You're wasting your time. 
So the same thing applies to those people that are investing, mm -hmm. you know. So sickness, malaria is a key thing. It takes a lot of money from us. Look at it. To really, con con you know, constructively fight, uh, fight malaria, about $4.7 billion is needed. Mm. With just less than half of it that has been gotten. You know, um, majority of the money contributed by United States, uh, the Global Fund, UK, Japan, mm. and Germany. Mm. Even the malarious countries have tiny amount of money to contribute to the malaria. So you can imagine that the key money you want to spend on other social infrastructure is being pushed to either roll back malaria, control malaria, because we've not gotten to the stage of uh, elimination of malaria. You know, I mean, we've seen countries that have eliminated malaria that have not even richer than us. They've, they've been able to cut the transmission of malaria. But for us, we're still at the level of controlling malaria. Okay, Doctor, we'll come back to talk about how they've been able to do that successfully, and we have not been able to do that, but we need to go to Ibadan exactly, for a bit. Exactly, where we have Dr. Fumi Koya, Senior Registrar Family Medicine, University College Hospital, Ibadan, on your state. Good morning, Dr. Fumi, and we um, would like to look, would like you to talk more on malaria. We're looking at World Malaria Day, and this is some sickness that is very, very common to we Nigerians. So as a doctor, what would you say, how, or what would you advise, or how would you say we manage this um, as a people? If you invite me, I'm glad to be here. I would like to say that uh, malaria is a disease that is transmitted by um, an infection called Pasmoda falciparum. It is transmitted by a vector called um, female anopheles mosquito by a bite of this um, mosquito when it takes a blood meal. And because of that, it causes some symptoms in individuals. Symptoms like um, fever, they can have a headache. Fever means just high body temperature. They can have a headache. They can have um, generalized body aches. They can have pains. They can be vomiting. And the symptoms depend on the severity. You can have mild symptoms. You can have an, a complicated form of malaria or an uncomplicated form of malaria. I would like to advise people that um, because this disease is everywhere, we're in a country, in a tropical country, where we have, um, um, it's common among us, we say we have endemicity here in Nigeria. And so the mosquito is all around us. And because of that, it's important to protect oneself from this, the bite of this mosquito because that is how the disease is transmitted. According to statistics from the World Health Organization, we know that there has been an increase in the number of cases of malaria in Nigeria. Also all over the world, over 216 million cases has been recorded in 2016. Ironically, these are the figures that we had back in 2012. So are we winning this battle is what I would like to ask this morning. And so it is advisable to protect oneself. I remember you said something about the weather is hot, you want to go out and wear, um, enjoy the fresh air. But while you go out, it is advisable to wear long clothing. You could wear a long shirt or long trousers or a long skirt to protect yourself from the bite of this um, mosquito. At the same time, you can use um, a mosquito repellent, which we have, which are available. An example is Odomos, which can help protect against that insect bite as well. And most importantly, once you have the symptoms, like I mentioned earlier, it is advisable to go to a center where you can be treated appropriately. Do not just go to a chemist where they give you drugs. The World Health Organization has already advocated that we use a combination therapy, which is artemisinin-based combination therapy. We have moved away from just using one drug to treat malaria. We now use a combination of two drugs or more, um, artemisin or piperaquine or mefloquine. These are drugs that are available. If you go to a good center, you can get proper treatment, and then the disease will not, you won't succumb to the disease. Um, that the management of ma malaria in Nigeria is actually not so expensive. Uh, still judging by the fact that a lot of people would want to cut the corners by getting um, over-the-counter drugs by themselves or just do it the local way, home remedy and all of that. Um, what is the best way to managing malaria? Malaria can be managed, um, you have pharmacological means of management, that means use of drugs and then non-use of drugs. Um, for the non-use of drugs is where you 
get to prevent and control the disease by what I had stated earlier. But management is important, like I said, to use drugs and appropriate drugs. There was a time in the past when the use of chloroquine was more than enough to cure the disease. But however, because of the abuse and the use, we developed a chloroquine resistance, and that is why the World Health Organization advocated for the use of a combination therapy, such that the drugs can act at different sites where the um, virus, or the, the, the parasite rather, tra can affect the red blood cells and all. And that is why we use a combination therapy. We do not use just one drug. In the past, treatment of malaria, the monotherapy then was cheaper. You could get treatment for 300 and now. But now I think it's quite expensive. You can get it for 1,000 naira because these drugs are a little bit more expensive than what we used to have in the past. Management now is combination therapy and artemisin based. There must be an artemisin based um, component which can be artemita or artesunate. And this has, in a way, increased the cost of um, treatment of malaria as well. You have to eat properly and make sure that you are feeding well because it will help to build up your immunity as well that can help to protect against the disease. Let's look at the types. I mean, you're talking about treating malaria, but we know that there are different types of malaria and then in um, treating or managing them, you use different drugs, right? Can you please tell us these types of malaria and then um, how best to manage them? Um, malaria, like I said, the one that commonly causes um, the burden of disease that we experience now is one that is caused by Plasmodium falciparum. It um, can cause a lot of um, damage to these red blood cells and can cause the person to succumb with anemia and other um, problems associated with it. There are different um, modalities of treatment. We can have use of oral drugs, that's you take um, tablets, or we can have injectables, that's use of injections, depending on the severity of the disease. Severity of the disease by that I mean symptoms like the person can have a very low blood sugar, person can have a low blood level, low PCV, person can have altered consciousness. So depending on how the patient presents, that is how the patient will be managed. Some can be managed on an outpatient basis whereby they are just giving drugs to go home and that occurs when the patient presents with mild symptoms of malaria. However, some will need to be admitted in the hospital when they present with severe forms of the disease. For the mild cases where they are treated on outpatient basis, as a doctor, I would rather prescribe, um, patient can give, there are different brand names. I won't want to mention a brand name, but I'll write and mention the generic names. You can have um, Artemita Lumefantri. You can have at, um, Artemita Preparaquine. Um, you can have a combination with um, Mefloquine. You can have a combination with Amodiaquine. But the, there must be an Artemisimine-based component, which is the Artemita or the Artesunate. For the um, inpatient basis, the patients will be admitted, the patients will be resuscitated, given some IV drips and given some um, injectables. And injectables can be a temita or a tesonate given by intravenous um, administration or via the Botox intramuscular administration. So depending on how the patient presents, the patient will be attended to. And that is why I would advise, do not just um, go to the chemist and then receive over-the-counter drugs. Come and see the doctor, let him evaluate you and examine you and then give you the appropriate treatment as expected. Right, we must say yes, a yes. very big thank you for your time. Uh, Dr. Fumi Koya, she joined us from Ibadan. She is the Senior Registrar, Family Medicine, University College Hospital, Ibadan. Many thanks for being a part of Gatsu today. Now, doctor, before we, went to, <clears throat> before we went to Ibadan, you were telling us about some countries, how they've been able, not so rich as us, how they've been able to completely eliminate uh, malaria. So what is the issue? Why are we not able to get to that level? Again, um, first and foremost, um, we, we know that we have a challenge with our health system. We, we have a pretty weak health system. Funding is key, okay? And then the, the, the political will to need to push back this, this year is very key, it's very important also. Now, because when you are looking at the process of, now we're, 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 we're at the level of control. That's why we are putting up, you know, our gloves and we want to box and uh, fight malaria. So, you know, but at the level of elimination, we're looking at it first and foremost, you need to do a proper vector control. And mm -hmm. if I involves after and uh, indoor residual spray, you want to do that. You want to look at the environment, you know, the, the, how the water flows, 
whether the gutters are covered, mm -hmm. whether debts are, you know, you need to really tidy that appropriately. Then you need to quickly want to identify and treat cases of malaria, okay? Um, and then the available of the drugs you, have, you want to use, you know, and then you need to do a continuous monitoring and evaluation mm -hmm. to see what is the rate of malaria here, and we, what are we winning, what are the episodes, you know, and then uh, in addition, you want to do a comprehensive education so that even at the level of the home, people can then start intervening and preventing episode of malaria. So, but the key thing that needs to happen is this, because there are breeding points for those mosquitoes, you know, and then they, before they enter home to look mm -hmm. for food. So you need to attack those, their breeding points where, you know, the pool of water, either consistent and recurrent both outdoor and indoor spray, mm. and these are not cheap uh, interventions. Unfortunately, for those countries um, that are not having malaria, yeah, they are actually the one investing more on how to help us with malaria. But for me, um, like um, most of the things that's happening in our country, um, we're not paying the re requisite and attention to even just one thing, just one thing, honestly. You know, I think there's one word that says, this is one thing I do. Just one thing. Represent us to just one thing that we are committed to really getting to the level of what we call elimination, not control. Now we move from control to elimination of malaria, stop transmission of malaria in our zone so by direct focus, attention at the local level. Because what happens most of the time is that at the local level, few things are happening. Mm. People still have to rely on their native drugs and their go and, and their and the leaves they have to boil to drink. People have cargoes to give you to drink. Because that is a, an indication that even the, the medical, the drug part of the malaria treatment of Afon is not being, is not reaching the grassroots as much as possible. Then, w most of the time, we, we, we situate those care within government setting. You know, we must be able to gradually take malaria to the level of even the um, uh, pharmacy, okay, where it's going to be easy for somebody to do a screening, mm -hmm. you know, and then treat. Because the, the protocol is such that for children, you know, not less than five years with fever, you treat for malaria. But for older people, you then do a rapid diagnostic test, mm -hmm. and then before you now say, okay, it's malaria, and treat. So if, if, if those things are, because most of those things are not produced in the country, the drugs that we're looking for how to uh, enhance uh, the power of the pharmaceutical company to produce drugs. Those are not being produced. So these are some of the obstacles. Mm -hmm. But that would not be an excuse for us not be able to really, you know, uh, uh, eliminate malaria. Because, you know, this country, this country that is in, 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 in having tumor recently, Armenia, mm -hmm. has been able to, you know, Armenia, even Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. you understand? Sri Lanka, you know, have the same, you know, um, economic f uh, shape like us. If we were still better, but they'd be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Iran is killing off. Saudi Arabia is killing off. So the countries at our level that are really doing elimination. Mm -hmm. But for us, we must, we have been, we have been rolling back mal malaria. Now we are at the level of control. We should move to elimination and, you know, this will that is more important here. Okay, okay. so a lot of people would like to know We've had cases of malaria killing people. Is, th is that true? Oh, obviously. Listen, um, even the last report, malaria report from WHO, showed that uh, we, we lost about 400, uh, let's close to five, half a million people, Too malaria million. deaths. Mm. Mm. Interestingly, out of these 450 something thousand people, 400,000 of them occurred in, South, in South Africa. Okay? Wow. And for every 10 deaths that occur, Nigeria supplies three worldwide. Wow. Mm. So you know, we must put this in context. For every 10 deaths from malaria, Nigeria as a country supplies three. And mm. who are the culprits? So that we account for 30% of deaths in malaria worldwide. Worldwide. Mm. Worldwide. You understand? So, which is really, really sad enough. We don't want to be repeating all these things. Mm. It's sad enough. And then this, are, this, is, a, this is a disease that can be easily controlled mm. with directed effort, easily controlled. Now, who are the people, who are the culprits of this malaria? Extreme of ages, you mm. understand? Very young, older, especially under five, and very old. Mm. Of course, the immune system plays a role here, yeah. and nutrition plays a role. Secondly, pregnant women. Mm. 
okay? So because malaria can progress to severe form in children and in pregnant children. So when you say it can progress to severe form, what are the severities that we could get from malaria? Because I've heard of um, cerebral uh, malaria. Yes, yes, of course. Through? Malaria can cause massive breakdown of blood cells. Mm. Mm. Just enter the body, massive breakdown of red blood cells and leads to anemia, shortage of blood. Mm -hmm. It can then, you know, the breakdown of the hemoglobin can also affect the kidney wow. and mm -hmm. lead to kidney failure. Just you know, malaria? Yes, just malaria. Malaria can then enter the brain and cause unconsciousness. If I, when they recover, some of them may not be able to see again. Some may wow. have, you know, permanent cerebral deficiency. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's how bad, you know, malaria. And in fact, even children, malaria can result into diarrhea. You just be having diarrhea, 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 you know, and then lose blood, lose nutrients, and that. In fact, malaria can be complicated by additional infection, what you call sepsis, okay, which will now then affect the whole system, you know, worsen the respiratory tract, and then leads to death. So these are actually these are the severe form of uh, of malaria. So the temperature control might be very difficult in some instances um, before you know the person the person is dead. But right. is it transferable from human to human? Well, again, I am transfusion malaria. That is another example of malaria that is possible. Okay. Because the parasite can be in blood, and in this part of the world where we use it, do a lot of blood transfusion, mm. we can transfuse malaria parasites mm. from well, one but, but how can that go un un undetected? Uh, every blood should be screened before um, it can transfer to other people. It should be screened for malaria. For almost anything, I don't know. Uh, well, what, how far does the screening go? Well, that, the screening is thorough. Then mm. let's, let's, be, let's be factual. The screening is thorough. Mm. Actually, for the, the grievous illnesses okay. like HIV, hepatitis, and all, the, all those stuff. You know? But uh, let's appreciate the fact that even the, the, you need to do uh, a very a thick blood film. Mm. That's the key thing. You know, you may do a rapid test for somebody and you may not pick malaria now and take the blood. And then, you know, over the time, the malaria grows, you know, inside the blood you've taken, and then, you know, becomes uh, transfusable mm -hmm. in a way. So, wow. so, apart from that, that is the mode, the, only the mode common the mode, you know. Uh, uh, as, and on the other hand, it's possible for, um, for babies, sometimes babies that are born, mm. to actually, you know, uh, have malaria as a result mm -hmm. of yeah, passing the, the placenta, mm. uh, you know, of the mother okay. and entry the baby. All right, it's Galaxy. Today, just to remind you that you can be a part of this discussion if you have a question for our guest as regards uh, this particular topic, what malaria day are you presenting, any symptoms, uh, what questions do you have concerning malaria, feel free to send us an SMS. The number will be displayed shortly, or you can also interact with us on social media using the hashtag Galaxy today. We'll take a quick break and I'll be right back to talk some more. Stay with us. Malaria is an infection that can be caused by a few different types of plasmodium species, which are single-celled parasites that get spread around by mosquitoes. Once the plasmodium gets into the bloodstream, it starts to infect and destroy mainly liver cells and red blood cells, which causes a variety of symptoms and sometimes even death. Malaria is a serious global health problem that affects millions of people, particularly young children under the age of 5, pregnant women, patients with other health conditions like HIV and AIDS, and travelers who've had no prior exposure to malaria. Tropical and subtropical regions are hit the hardest. Together, the most affected regions form the malaria belt, which is a broad band around the equator that includes much of Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. There are hundreds of types of plasmodium species, but only five cause malarial disease in humans, and those are Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium ovale, and Plasmodium nullesi. Plasmodium vivax uses a specific urethrocyte surface receptor called the Duffy antigen. And some individuals, particularly those with sickle cell anemia, lack this receptor, meaning that Plasmodium vivax can't get into their cells. In other words, having sickle cell anemia is genetically related to having relative protection from Plasmodium vivax. 
Other diseases like thalassemia and G6PD deficiency make the parasite-infected urethrocyte more susceptible to dying from oxidative stress. So despite the obvious downside to having any of these diseases, they do offer an upside when it comes to warding off a malaria infection. In fact, because malaria has historically circulated in Africa, the genes underlying these diseases are thought to have conferred a natural selection advantage and therefore become more common in the genetic pool. Now, malaria starts when a plasmodium-infected female Anopheles mosquito hunts for a blood meal in the evening and through the night. Like a tiny flying vampire, the mosquito is drawn to carbon dioxide that gets breathed out as well as bodily smells, like This is me! Tasty nutrition, good for you. All right, welcome back. We still have Dr. Tui Mebawondo with us here in the house, and we're looking at malaria today, being World Malaria Day. All right, doctor, let us look at some issues right now. The, the doctor in Ibadan talked about a management, but you still find out that some people would rather want to go the herbal way or home remedies when it comes to malaria because they feel that it's more, uh, they get more efficacy from it. I mean, but what are the dangers or what should be the concerns here? Again, uh, one of the key concerns is the fact that we must be sure that we're dealing with malaria. Mm. Because the molecules we're using are quite in finance. We have few number of molecules being used and we don't want resistance to those molecules. Hmm. Okay, we're using chloroquine those days. It became such a bad thing that the resistance was crazy and we mm. had to drop chloroquine. That was the reason chloroquine was dropped. Now, so you, we need to be sure that we have malaria because now if somebody takes a drug, say, oh, I treated malaria last week, I'm treating malaria again, he must be treating something else. Mm. And then you are now exposing the molecule to the probability of, you know, of mosquito developing resistance to it, okay? We don't, or plasmodium, sorry. Mm. We don't want that to happen. Secondly, once we now say that you have malaria, you must complete your drug. Because um, what people tend to do is to take drugs, the first, by the second day they are well, they say, okay, I'm well already, you know, let me leave this treatment. Mm. So because that one, again, you know, um, tends to drive resistant strain of plasmodium, okay? Mm. So these two concerns become key. Then the third concern is that we, we must be able to, honestly, at our own low, small level, be able to put in place a barrier to prevent mosquitoes from biting us. Mm. While growing up, we knew that we, we had to sleep on that net. It was not insecticide treated. But now we have insecticide treated nets. Mm. You know that um, government want to distribute some of those distributions have challenges in terms, in the sense that the local community, the remote areas, they have to reach areas and not having access to those nets. Mm. Okay, so massive deployment of nets is key. Have, be sure that person has malaria is key. Doing your treatment, completing your treatment is also very mm. important. So you can't. It's very difficult for you to have malaria this week and have malaria next week. You know, once you say, I have malaria this week, I've treated it, I'm not having malaria again. You need to probably check whether you're having a resistance or you have some other problem. But then again, still talking about malaria and um, the way it can actually spread, is it something that you can be immune to over time? Again, yes, you, we, 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 for us, we develop immunity hmm. to malaria when we compare, because we are in the immune zone and we have with non-immune zone. If we are not immune to malaria, of course, it will be a catastrophe for us. Mm -hmm. But we have some level of immunity, but it's not sufficient to take you away from having malaria. 
Now, you may not have the classical symptom of that fever, headache, body ache, and so. Yeah. For some people, it might just be, you know, you just feel tired and prolonged sleeping. So it may just be joint pain. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 it has some protein manifestation because of the level of immunity okay. we have developed to the parasite. Yeah. But the immunity against malaria is not, it's a, uh, it's a kind of delayed immunity. Yeah. It's not an immediate kind of immunity. It's a delayed okay. immunity depending on the consciousness of your body. Okay. But, you know, even the role of diet, good food, good living, and you know, that's supposed to aid our immunity, we're also having challenges with malnutrition. Because Nigeria is about the second country with the minority children, second, the country, second country with the largest number of minority children. So we have a double whammy or multiple whammy, let me use that way, buffeting us from all sides of the country. You have malaria, who is, who is, the parasite who is trying to kill, you have malnutrition who is, who is there, you have poor infrastructure, you have weak health system. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame, you know, in a way, if you really want to sit down and look at her. And I keep repeating it, we must understand the connection between good health system, economic opportunities, uh, capability, political capabilities, development, and inflow of foreign direct investment. So you cannot just then go right ahead and run to Washington and be shouting mm. and be organizing seminars and be asking somebody to come and put his money mm. where the health system is not working where you cannot even get the requisite education to drive the business is coming to put here, it's not, he won't listen to you. If it's going to come, he'll bring a, a, a briefcase, yeah. put the money there. With the slightest provocation, he takes out the money away and says, yeah, no, this country is going, to, I'm going to lose my money. Okay. But doctor, okay. for the sake of, sorry, Uche, for the sake of clarity, can we just really uh, roll out all of the symptoms? Because some different people yes. present with different symptoms. And then again, the specific question would be, uh, uh, is uh, malaria in any way related to the bowel? Because some people complain that when they have uh, malaria, they seem to feel some sensation around the bowels. You know, for me, malaria is a whole systemic illness. Yes, we know that it's caused by a, a, a parasite called Plasmodium species. Okay? And then there are many variants of that Plasmodium. But the, 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 it's taken by female mosquito while during the feeding and transfer to another person. Mm. The, the, the parasite will then go straight to the liver and, and undergo stages of maturation in the liver mm. and then it's now released into the blood, you know, um, gradually released into the blood. The purpose of releasing into the blood, the purpose of, actually the purpose of being released into the blood regularly is so that another mosquito can pick it. It's an evolutionary thing, so that another, mm. another mosquito can pick the parasite can take to another person. I mm -hmm. think that's the evolutionary that's because I've been wondering why it has to, after staying liver, why it has to it's release simple. to the blood. So depending, you know, then you now, when the malaria comes, you know, um, the per headache, fever is the first thing. Yeah. Fever is the most common symptom of malaria. The body is hot, uh, the, the person will have headache, body ache, okay? In children, they could have diarrhea, yeah. they could actually cough. Um, mm -hmm. some other, you know, even some children, the urine color can even change yeah. because of the affectation of the part of the, kid, uh, of the kidney. Yeah. So now, um, for, for those that the, uh, the parasites break down a lot of the blood, the children could have yellowness of the eyes, which we call jaundice. Mm -hmm. The abdomen will become tense, the liver can become painful, the, kidney, uh, the, the spleen can become enlarged. So you see the tenseness of the abdomen. The person can vomit, lose appetite. Okay. You know. So these are the co uh, co uh, the group of symptoms that uh, the person can present with. Um, but it may not be a classical case because depending on your level of immunity, it may just be this headache that is not just going away. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be just with that body ache and your weakness, and even you know you just feel sleepy every time. You know, so. And so some people, it may just be tightness of the tummy or tightness of the chest and yellow feeling of being unwell that may be the, the symptoms of malaria for, mm. for them. Okay, but uh, many years ago, I heard, I overheard um, pharmacists, pharmacists um, telling someone that um, your immune system, if you have a very good immune system, you could actually fight back these sicknesses. How true is that? Well, again, um, let's look at our environment. You have, what, look at the condition that's even affecting us. How many of them will have that prime immune system 
to be able to confront a lot of diseases. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the purpose of the body itself is to actually keep you alive, you mm -hmm. know, to stay alive. Rightly so. Uh, if you have a immune system, you can mitigate or reduce the extent, the severity of the malaria. You know, but um, I, I can tell you that immune system alone is not sufficient to fight malaria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter your immune system, I don't care whether you're president, whether you are the head of the doctors anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not your immune system is not sufficient to fight malaria because you'll be confronted with daily stress, you'll be confronted with other issues. Mm -hmm. that can actually aggravate the thing. But for a lot of us, there are um, the malaria parasite that brings itself as sleeping in the body, mm -hmm. just sleeping, waiting for an environment that can you know, make them wake up. So it could actually be latent for a while. Yeah, it could be latent and mm -hmm. just be sleeping mm -hmm. wow. in the liver. So wait for the right condition, then the thing now comes up. Okay. So, okay. so that, that's probably the best you can do mm -hmm. with your immune system as far as malaria is concerned. Okay. okay, but can it be totally eradicated of from course. the system? Okay, it's possible. No, you mean from the system, from I the mean, body, from I the mean, whole well, world? Uh, uh, yes. Eradication, no, no. we've eradicated disease before. Yeah. I think the goal... I mean, yeah, in Nigeria. It can be, it, you know, for us, when you're talking about Nigeria, we're talking about elimination. Mm. When you're talking about worldwide, we're talking about eradication. eradication. Okay. So we can eliminate, all we're trying to do is to break the transmission. Okay. Because we surely know that there is... A vector called mosquito that grows in this kind of environment and that breeds this type of environment mm. that needs to move to come and bite you, mm. you know, to transmit the, 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 the parasite to you. So we can break that mm. transmission. That's the key thing we need to do. And we break the transmission by different effort. We look at the vector. In fact, right, right away they do some research in the Amazon where they are actually, you know, um, creating sterile mosquitoes in a way so that you know we, we, we look at how you know the population of mosquitoes can be reduced gradually by creating okay. sterile mosquitoes it's a genetic yeah. uh, you know experiment going on you know people are doing that that is part of the vector control you know some are looking at it and saying that wait a minute um we want mosquitoes that cannot be able to transmit the parasite okay. this is a high level of this but at our own level here your gutter yeah. you know dra drain all the waters around you cut all the bushes around you, do outdoor spray. Okay. Do mm -hmm. outdoor spray. That again you are dealing with the the vector yeah. at that point. Then have a net. Apart from putting insecticide nets or nets around your windows or, or door, have a net that you sleep under. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even after all this you still mm -hmm. have malaria, get proper treatment. treatment. All right, doctor, so, we have some questions for you here. Let us just quickly get to them. I think I'll try and take them. Um, they are just um, coming in by the numbers. Firstly, uh, the one I got here says, uh, Doctor, can treatment of malaria by, be done through the use of... Okay, so does the consumption of early morning urine cure malaria? That's one. Uh, this other person is actually asking um, what he could do or what she could do. He says, my name is Choma. Please, what drugs are good for treating malaria? Because I have recurrent malaria once every two or three months, and if it's normal. Uh, yeah, uh, let's get this. Um, the dr drinking of urine, either early morning or late morning, to treat anything is no, no. I don't, there's nothing, there's no study that says that when you drink urine, you're going to solve any problem. Yeah. Okay, so please, let's get that straight. <laughs> what is the constituent of urine, mainly urea? And some constraints from the blood. The blood looks at that this thing is not proper. Let me let me excrete it out, yeah. and then you now want to drink it back. So I, I please, if you're practicing that, it's not it's not um, appropriate. So okay. don't drink urine again. Instead, yeah. seek treatment. Again, we've moved on. We're not in the we're not in the experimental um, health care now. Okay. Now you if you, you yes you can have malaria every two months. Well, you know why not? But again. Um, the requisite drugs is the artemisinin combination therapy. therapy, which you have to use over three days, mm -hmm. usually three days, mm -hmm. you know. But if you know that you are prone to having malaria every now and then, take some other steps, you know, get by insecticide treat treated nets, okay. the long lasting one, and sleep under it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the bite occurs in the night, around the middle of the night, between um, hours of 10 and, and 3 or 4. That is when mosquitoes actually, the female mosquito comes out to feed, you know. So if you, you sleep under nets, you know, and if you are staying outside and you rub 
the parent, your family not going to get malaria. So you need to take some other additional mm. step apart from just swallowing drugs. Okay, more questions here. Uh, let me just try and take two at the time. Uh, this one says, and doctor, I am AS, but why, how come I keep on having recurrent um, malaria? That's one. The other person is asking, um, what cream could I, uh, okay, what type of cream prevents mosquito bite and how long can it last? That's Daniel from Lagos. Uh, um, again, so if you are AS, you are supposed to actually be relatively immune to malaria. Okay. You know, um, maybe you need to, again, go and check your genotype. That, mm. is, that is because I, the, the logic of having AS and having recurrent malaria, recurrent, that's the word, um, recurrent, recurrent malaria is, it's not that you may not have malaria, but it's, for recurrent malaria and AS, they don't agree mm -hmm. together. You, must, you, need, you need to recheck your genotype. If your genotype you know, is still AS, you need to actually recheck. Whenever you feel sick, go and do a proper test and know mm -hmm. it may not be a malaria. Mm -hmm. Not all fever uh, are malaria. Mm -hmm. And not all body ache is due to malaria. Please, mm -hmm. let's get that. But then again, can, can malaria actually be diagnosed without a test? Can, can, we, can it be diagnosed without a test? The protocol is that for children under five mm. with fever, you can treat for malaria. But for, for adults, you have to do a rapid diagnosis. Because I've had a situation where people go yes. to see some doctors mm. in the hospital without tests that or just questions and everything. The doctor starts treating malaria. Uh, well, again, um, it, depending on if the person is really very sick, but normally mm. the rapid diagnosis test does not take time. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a rapid test. You before, you know three minutes or so, you've done the test and you can have results. Mm. So we, we let's encourage um, everybody to at least run a test before you commence treatment. Because the, the reason is this, we don't want to mess up with the molecule we have in our hands. We oh. don't want to end up with resistant parasites to the drug mm. we have on our hands. Or else, where do we go after this? Okay. What can you say about self-medication here in Nanya? How lot of people... That, that, that was what I was saying time. essentially. because. Let's appreciate the fact that all drugs have side effects. Okay. And anyhow, we look at it. Whether you are taking the drug for malaria or for anything, mm -hmm. or even blood tonic now, you know, mm -hmm. we're looking at them as having side effects. So, so we should limit um, self-medication. We should be able to seek and as well. And I keep asking people questions when they say that I have malaria. And who told you? Say my sister. I said, <laughs> now when you want to make your hair, did you go to shoemaker? They said no. When this is your cloth you are wearing. Was it made by hairdresser? I said no. So if you, if it, it, so, something as simple as that, uh, making your shoe, you have to go to the shoemaker. Your dress has to go to you know to to, to, to a dressmaker like the one uh, Justin is wearing. Yes, you know, when it now comes to your health, the most important of all, mm. you now have to rely on charlatans and people you know and advice from a sister mm. or from a brother. No, I, I think honestly, that attitude is a key thing that we need to change. I, I keep saying that. Even if you have going to have friends, you must have somebody you must be able to call. Mm -hmm. You know, you must have a lawyer, you must have a medical doctor. You know, probably you need a police because now <laughs> so that we jump out of the All right, moving doctor. vehicle. Okay, more <laughs> questions here. Uh, what about a pregnant woman with malaria and diabetes? How can she go about it? Yeah, uh, 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 that, that's uh, that's a double one because mm -hmm. diabetes itself tends to put a challenge on pregnancy and mm -hmm. challenge on immune system. So if you're not pregnant and have malaria, of course you'll be treated, it's not a big deal. There is what we call intermittent uh, uh, preventive treatment, we call okay. IPT in pregnancy. It's given at certain interval, that the, the drug is given at certain interval mm. to prevent uh, malaria. malaria. Because malaria itself tends to lower the birth weight of the baby, cause mm. intrauterine growth retardation in the baby and compromise mm. you know, the health of the baby. So there's what we call intermittent preventive treatment, mm. which at a particular time you give this drug, after four weeks again you give the same drug to prevent the, person, the pregnant woman from having malaria. But still after that, if the woman has malaria, the, the rational thing is to meet a doctor who is going to look and assess mm. the risk and benefit of any drug that needed to be administered during pregnancy. Okay, doctor, okay. quickly, uh, two in one. Uh, how do we know the difference between malaria and typhoid fever? And uh, doctor, research um, has it, I don't know, that's what he's saying, that uh, malaria uh, is resistant to um, ACT. How true is this? Um, well, again, typhoid and malaria is, a, a, apart from clinical examination, is a product of tests. 
it's a product of tests, you know. And it, there's no law that says that once you have one, you cannot have the other. Okay. You know, because <laughs> so um, essentially, don't always assume that you have typhoid mm. and then start studying antibiotics. Don't. A typhoid is not really that common, honestly. Okay. You know, so um, the difference with a doctor will tell you and they do a test. Now, a resistant to ACT. Now, there's a level of resistance we get to that we get worried. Okay. Okay. But generally speaking, we're still comfortable with ACT now. Okay. But um, that is why we're trying to protect the molecule with all those things I've mentioned. You okay. know, but the level we get to, um, that is why if you say you have malaria this week and you have it again next week, mm. then the doctor will ask a question Is the drug working? I, I mean, am I treating the wrong thing? Okay. So it's important for you to assess and speak to the doctor when you experience such a thing. But um, nobody can put his feet down and say that you know it's not likely for us to start having resistance to ACT. Yes, it but, but it is not alarm. It's not something we need to worry about okay. at this stage now. But for clarity's sake, is can malaria? Can you have malaria to the point where it leads to typhoid? <laughs> oh no, no, no. There are two different things. Honestly, okay. there are two different things. But it doesn't mean that someone cannot have both malaria and typhoid. And typhoid. Okay. You know, so and they use a drug too. Some people think if, if for instance, I use a particular drug to treat malaria, does it mean that that same drug would work for someone else? Well, because we're dealing with the same plasmodium, mm -hmm. except the person has an added condition mm -hmm. or reacted to one of the molecules. Mm -hmm. Okay, because now, um, you want to be careful if somebody is having arrhythmia and uh, yeah, you want to use mefloquine and all those things, mm -hmm. you want to be careful. There are conditions in your body that will not support certain anti-malaria. Mm -hmm. So that is why the doctor's opinion is key. Mm -hmm. You understand? But if you have, if those conditions are not there, because what we're dealing with is not the human, it's not the person, it's the jam. The jam is so right. ACT here will, that kills malaria will kill malaria even oh. in the US or, or so oh, Well, so I think we must rest it at that because we're completely out of time. Yes. But we're looking at what Malaria Day and um, Dr. Tu, you may want to health practitioner, has been discussing all of the issues with us and what we can do as we get eliminating malaria and eradicating it uh, globally. Yes, and of course, uh, we had um, Dr. Fumi Koya, Senior Registry of Family Medicine, University College Hospital, Ibadan, in your state, earlier in the program. Thank you so much. And of course, Dr. Tui Mebawudu, a public health practitioner. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure, always. All right, tomorrow is going to be um, lifestyle, of course, is even more interesting. I'm sure you'll be joining us same time again tomorrow. I am Uche Uniakoroji. Do have a wonderful Wednesday. And I'm Justin Academy. Many thanks for all of the comments and the questions that you have sent. I can still see more uh, calls and more SMSs, but just uh, keep the conversation flowing on, on social media using the hashtag Galaxy today. Bye for now.